Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Nickel City Mafia channel. Um, my name is Mike Thornton, and today we're going to talk about all of the great food out of Buffalo. I have a special guest today, my beautiful daughter, Nicole. She's joining me live from Buffalo. Hi, Nicole. How are you doing? Hi, good. How are you? Fantastic. It's great to see you. And thanks again for taking time out of your busy schedule. I know you're a busy girl, and uh, appreciate you taking a little bit of time with your dad. So... I know you're busy, so we're going to get right into this. We'll get through these uh, as quick as possible. Um, I feel obligated, everyone, to kind of, before we get into the, the foods, I definitely have to give a warning based on what you're going to see on the stream today. So let's get going. Warning. Side effects of watching the stream could include the following. Hunger pains, food dreams, buffalo food cravings. If you experience any of these symptoms, please contact your local travel agent immediately to book your next vacation in Buffalo. So there you have it, folks. I'm warning you, you're going to be hungry after this. Uh, I, I've been hungry all week. Every time I have been prepping for this, I'm just ready to get on a plane and get back to Buffalo. Uh, so anyhow, let's get into it. First thing we're going to talk about, um, I had to make an exception here. This is not one of the foods. It's not a food. It's a drink. But every good meal deserves a good drink. Now, some of you are going to argue that there are other drinks you'd rather have, but for the family channel here, we're going to talk about a drink that is unique to Buffalo. It's called Loganberry. And uh, Loganberry kind of uh, was first introduced at a theme park called Crystal Beach. Back in the day when I was a little kid, I actually got to go there. It's over the border, border in South Ontario and in Canada. And it was a great amusement park. I still remember the Comet, the Wild Mouse, the Magic Carpet Ride, some good stuff. But one of the drinks that originated there was Loganberry. Now, Loganberry is actually, it's a real berry. It's a, it's a hybrid between a blackberry and a raspberry. It's a very sweet drink, non-carbonated, non-caffeine drink. Eh, is it healthy for you? Uh, that, that's, you know, I'm on the fence about that one, but it's delicious. I know I love it. I know a lot of folks out in Buffalo who love it. But, Nicole, you're not so sold on it, right? This kind of not your thing? It's kind of like it's like a juice slash tea type deal. It's not usually what I reach for, but I know like a lot of people who love it. And especially like if they go to certain places, it's, it's what they reach for. Yeah. But yeah. it's good, but it's not like my first choice. What about your friends? <laughs> it's just my preference. I know, I know. What about your friends, uh, your family, um, your mom? I think your mom's a fan of it, right? Mom likes it. She also likes, um, they have like, they'll make different sauces and stuff with it. She likes a good Loganberry barbecue sauce. So. Oh, yes. I heard that this is a thing for uh, uh, one of the foods we're going to talk about later. So good deal. Yeah. So there it is, folks. You can actually, it's funny. I went on Amazon and I looked at this. You can order these. Actually, not these. Yes, you can order these. They're super expensive. Um, and some of the other things can be ordered through Amazon. Um, when we get to them, I'll, I'll let you know about those. But anyhow, there was uh, kind of two um, flavors. I don't know if they really taste any different, but there's two brands. I think they're made by two different companies. There's the Crystal Beach Loganberry, and there's the Aunt Rosie's Loganberry. Are you familiar with both, Nicole? Yeah, I okay. am. Um, I think usually, like, if you go to restaurants, they usually have... Actually, no, they usually have a mixture of two between the two. Okay. But I, I'm familiar with both of them. I didn't realize that they were... I didn't want to put it together that it was started in Crystal Beach. Yeah. I gone up there to, for the beach, but I've never actually like been there when it was a theme park. Yeah, I believe they they, they closed it in 1989, but the the drink lived on both in Southern Ontario and Buffalo and the surrounding areas. So it's lived on, and, and and I know most of the restaurants serve it as well. So it's on the menu. Yeah. Order it up. Something you can try and go back home saying, hey, I tried that Loganberry in Buffalo. And, and thank you, Mike and Nicole, for recommending it to me. <laughs> <laughs> Let's move on to the first food on my list. And we're going to work our way up from, um, you know, I have nine foods to go over with, with everybody. I'm going to work our way from the bottom to the top. And let's get started with something called peanut sticks. What the heck is a peanut stick? You know, when I first was doing research on this, and I reached out to Nicole, and I was like, everyone, everything I had read said peanut sticks was a, was a thing in Buffalo. Now, I remember as a kid having these, 
And I remember uh, it was just a donut for me, a donut with peanuts. I didn't know the official name was a peanut stick. And I remember uh, reaching out to Nicole, and you had no clue either, right? I just thought it was a donut. I didn't realize it was a thing. <laughs> <laughs> so anyhow, it's a perfectly fried donut. They then glaze it in, in a honey glaze, and then they roll it in pure peanut pieces. So it's super delicious. If you like anything to do with peanuts, you need to try this out when, when you're in Buffalo. Um, I don't, I've never seen it out here in California, so I know it is pretty unique, and I'm not sure how far it stretches outside of the Buffalo area, but super yummy. I've seen lots of reviews on it. Again, as a kid, I loved it, and uh, everyone that I've seen who does a review on the peanut sticks uh, has loved it as well. So a couple places to go for for this, the peanut stick. One of the places I was able to find was Paula's Donuts, and then the, uh, I'm going to butcher this name, but it's the Di Camilo Bakery. You familiar with any of those, Nicole? Di Camilo, I'm not. Um, I know that there's a there's a bakery here in Buffalo uh, called Missouri that probably has them too because they've got really good donuts, but Paula's is a, is a big one. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that any donut place, ha- if you're in Buffalo, I'm sure this has to be part of the menu, you would think. Yeah. Yeah, Paula's is, is very popular here, depending on, because they have, like, themed donuts sometimes that people have stretched around the building. So be careful with what time of year wow. you go. May the 4th is not the best time to try and get Paula's hmm. donuts, because you're going to get a big line of Star Wars fans. <laughs> I'm sure you guys have a local donut shop cl- close to you. Where's your go-to place that uh, you and your mom might go pick up some donuts? Um, if we're going to go for, like, good donuts Missouri's. um otherwise like you just hit up a good tim hortons or even if you hit like legman's they have really good ones too um but yeah if we're gonna go to like a local place we'll usually head to Missouri's because it's close by um like i said paula's is usually pretty busy so it's not the first place we go just it's usually pretty packed in there right now i heard you mention tim hortons from my understanding some of the people that i've talked to in buffalo they don't actually serve up the peanut sticks not part of their their menu anyhow i don't know if anyone who's listening to this or watches it if you can uh you know comment put put something in the comment whether that's true or not but someone i talked they to yesterday like a, they have like a peanut donut but yeah now that you say that they don't have like an actual peanut stick right but like i said i didn't know that was a i didn't know that was a buffalo thing i just thought it was a donut <laughs> <laughs> all right well moving down the list here or up the list i should say um the next thing on my list is sponge candy yum it's a, it's a crunchy, light, toasted co- uh, toffee made from sugar, corn syrup, and baking soda. And it's surrounded by this yummy chocolate coating. Um, it's estimated to have originated around Buffalo sometime in the 1940s. I mean, it melts in your mouth. It, and then mixed with that chocolate that covers it, makes it a taste of heaven, in my opinion. Nicole, are you a fan of sponge candy? I love sponge candy. Um... I usually mom or my, it's one of my mom's favorite snacks, so we get it for her for like Mother's Day and stuff like that. And then I usually have to steal a bunch. So I, I love sponge candy. I think it's delicious. <laughs> totally agree, and I can't find it out here. I have to have friends back east uh, send that out to me. Now I don't want you to, people to confuse this with what's mm-hmm. called honeycomb candy. Honeycomb candy and sponge candy are they're made a lot in the same way, but there is a subtle difference. So if you do find something that's out here um, and you're like, oh, Mike was talking about sponge candy, that looks like it, make sure it truly is sponge candy. And of course, buying it at your local grocery store or whatever is not going to be anywhere near to what the taste is if you go to one of the local candy shops in Buffalo and pick this up. And I know a couple candy shops, I'm going to bring up uh, Parkside Candy, uh, which is on Main Street in Buffalo. And then there's Park Edge Sweet Shop, which is on Abbott Road. And Nicole, I know you mentioned this one, Co-Ed Candies on Abbott Road as well. I think that's uh, your go-to place is what you were saying. Yeah, actually Park Edge and Co-Ed are like right across the street from each other. So if you head to one, you can head to the other and try them out yourself. Yeah, I know. It's pretty crazy. You said they're right across the street from one another? Yeah. yeah. Like they're, they're on the same side of the street. There's just, just like a... A block between them so easily hit up both figure out which one's your favorite but yeah we're big co-ed candy people nice yeah that was another one i talked to a friend back in buffalo yesterday she mentioned that um 
that was her place go to place as well now the place i mentioned parkside candy which is in main, uh, main street in buffalo that kind of has a cool vibe inside of it it looks like a, a 50s type look and you can actually go in and sit down and and eat right there but these other sh shops we're talking about it's pretty much you go in grab your candy and and head out but i'd imagine um i mean it's the freshest you're going to get going to those candy stores and there's a bunch of candy stores in buffalo but these are the ones um that um, nicole's familiar with these are the ones i researched and uh there you can't go wrong with any of those i'd imagine are there any other uh, candy stores that you're aware aware of nicole or is the three we talked about pretty much um there's a place called Lettos that's on Ridge that they have chocolate and like nuts and they'll sell like sponge candy. But you can also go to, I'm not going to lie, Wegmans has pretty decent <laughs> um, sponge candy. It's a popular enough thing here that we have it at the grocery store and it actually tastes okay. Yeah, exactly. I did hear that too. I mean, I guess uh, it is going to be pretty fresh. I, I actually, funny story, I worked back at Wegmans back in my early days before I got into IT and all that good stuff. I worked there for about a year while I was going to college. I was working the night shift stocking. So I was super tired in the morning. But yes, Wegmans, a big grocery chain back there in Buffalo. I think it's the go-to chain. Is, is Tops still a thing back there? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So there's both of them. But Wegmans has, um, Wegmans is great. Yeah. Right. They actually, they've got food there that's delicious as well. All right. So you guys can, like I said, if you're in Buffalo, you can pretty much find this anywhere. If you're out here, make sure it says sponge candy because i don't i haven't seen it maybe there's some specialty candy shops that i've seen it but it's not going to be the freshest but uh check it out it's delicious you'll love it especially if you're a chocolate lover next thing on the list here we're going to go to bison bison dip uh this is you know when i was doing my my research of all the great foods man this brought back some good memories this there's no better chip dip in my opinion and i remember coming out here when i first came out to california i was looking for something like this it's nothing like it it's delicious and i i can see that they have other dips as well now they have a creamy ranch dip a buffalo ranch dip french onion dip which is my favorite and the only one i've tried and they have that uh, bacon french onion dip um, I know the bacon French onion dip is actually delicious. I'm not going to lie. It, have you tried all four of those or just the, the two? Um, I haven't. We mostly go for the French onion dip. That's like a standard. But I, um, Brian and I recently tried the bacon one and it's, it's pretty good. It has like just enough, it's like the regular bison dip and it has just a little bit of like that bacon undertone to it. And like, it's delicious. I'm really curious about that Buffalo ranch dip. I mean, it looks like it has a little, maybe a little buffalo sauce mixed in there. I don't know. That probably could be yeah. good. I, I've never tried that one I think, uh I think Caleb would love it. He's into his uh, ranch dips. But yeah, people uh, for chips, for veggies. I even seen someone recommend putting it on their burger. So very interesting. I don't know. <laughs> Have you? You said that I've never tried it on no. a burger before. I've eaten I'm eating it with veggies, but I never thought about putting it on the camera. Funny, funny. This is this is the one I was talking about earlier too, where this is another thing that I saw on Amazon that I could order, but it was a four pack and it was like eighty dollars to get it shipped out here. I'd oh, imagine goodness. they have to keep it cool and all that, so that probably ups the price. But I'm gonna try to work on something with you to get something sent out to me at a much <laughs> at a much cheaper cost. So as far as where you get this, pretty much anywhere, any store in Buffalo, surrounding areas, you're going to have Bison, right? Yeah, Station 7-Eleven. 7-Eleven has it. The grocery store. Yeah. If you're, yeah, if you're buying chips, this is the dip. And if you're veggies, if you like to dip veggies, this is the dip for you. All right. Moving up the list here, this is more of a, um, we're going to talk about Salins Hot Dogs, which is, uh, by the way, Bison, a, a company that, started in buffalo in 1965 it was originally called upstate farms and it, it, the name was changed to bison around 2006 when it was purchased by the niagara milk producers the name of the company that bought them anyhow moving on i wanted to get that in there salins so salins is another company it's a meatpacking company headquartered in buffalo new york it was uh, founded by joseph salin in 1869 it specializes in smokehouse deli meats, ham, turkey, chicken, hot ham, as well as hot dogs. And uh, so I kind of got a mix here. The place um, on here that you're seeing the pictures of are Ted's Hot Dogs. 
And I think that's the place to go for hot dogs. Nicole, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but they serve up the, the Salem's hot dogs. You can go to any store, just like we, you know, wherever you live in the country, you can go to the store and buy your hot dogs, but you're not going to find anything better. I wish Salem's was out here. I did look there. We're actually out in 30 states now, and I'll have to look to see if we got anything out here. I've never seen the package in our stores, but it's an amazing hot dog. And uh, Ted's, Ted's, to me, is the place to go. Nicole, yeah, what do you have to say about that? Yeah, I mean, Ted's is great. Salem's hot dogs are, like, gold standard, but we definitely, like, you can buy them in the store, grill them up at your house. They're, like, definitely what we get when we have a cookout. You get your hamburgers and you get your Salem's hot dogs, and that's how you have a good summer cookout. Is yeah, less. But Ted's, if you're going, if you're going out, you don't want to make them yourself. Ted's a great place to go. They let you do all the toppings yourself. You get to pick a regular size or a foot long. Yeah, if you look at those pictures there, I think those drinks might even be a Loganberry that we talked about earlier. <laughs> it looks, Probably. it looks to be a, a Loganberry <laughs> with the with the color on top of that uh, drink there. But look at those hot dogs. My goodness, I, I'm, I mean. I'm not usually a big hot dog person. I love hot dogs, but don't get me wrong. It's probably fourth on my list if I'm trying to figure out what I want to eat. But these make me want to go get a hot dog right now. And I think, Nicole, you were saying you guys had a, you have a couple packs of Salins in your... <laughs> yeah, we have some in our fridge. We cooked some last week. Oh, man. So, awesome stuff. Again, you take a look. It's out of Buffalo. I'm sure if you were to look online, maybe they ship. I don't know. I haven't checked into that. So pretty much uh, any any store will will sell Salins. And again, if you want to go to the restaurant that I know of that actually uses Salins for their hot dogs, it's it's Ted's Hot Dogs. All right. Now we're going to get into something that's not unique to Buffalo, but it's a big deal in Buffalo, the fish fry. Now the fish fry, uh, especially during Lent, um, the Catholics, who, and my, including myself, you know, we don't eat meat a lot of us don't eat meat on fridays and the go-to for those friday meals are our fish fries and you can see these are the beer battered ones which i prefer um, it's using a, a fish called haddock it's an ocean fish back in the day though they used to use a uh, yellow pike fish which i believe was um was caught out of lake erie and again correct me if i'm wrong based on some of the research i did yellow pike which Everyone that I've, uh, during my research, was a slightly better fish than haddock. Um, but haddock now is the, the fish that pretty much everyone uses. I still think you can look for certain restaurants in Buffalo that might have the yellow pike. Um, but you can't go wrong with either one of them. Haddock is the uh, the latest. And I talked to one of my friends back east yesterday, and she says, yeah, haddock's her, her favorite choice. She's not a fan of the yellow pike, but... Anyhow, I know Nicole. I'm, I can't. Are you a fish person? Has that grown on you, or not really your thing? It's not really. I've gotten better. Like I like more seafood, but I, fish fries aren't totally my thing. Um, I have had a couple that I didn't mind. Um, I know that they're a huge thing. Like my friends will, they get all excited. We'll go out for fish fries, and I usually either just have to suck it up and have one, or find something else on the menu. But. I have had some fish fries that are decent. I just, I'm not usually a fish person. It's not what I reach for automatically. Right. And most of the restaurants, I mean, that this is now a normal thing. You can go out. It doesn't have to be during lunch. You can go anytime and get a fish fry. And norm, normally on the plate, it's uh, coleslaw, some fries, the uh, fish itself, and then a uh, little serving on the side of tartar sauce. So super delicious. And you, we're going to go, we're gonna, I'm going to name a few places that were recommended. Everything that I say, all the locations, folks, these are recommendations from people in Buffalo. So take these to heart. These are the places you want to try out. So there's a place called Marinaro's. It's on Van Rensselaer Street in Buffalo. What's funny about that is that when I was researching that, I didn't realize it's right on the corner of where some of my best friends lived. And I hung out on that street. It was uh, Van, Rens Van Rensselaer and Roseville Street, and I hung out on that street so many times with my friends. I uh, played a lot of football there, street football touch, and uh, good times. And I think it, when, I, when I was younger, it wasn't Marinaro's. I'm sure it was a different thing. It was a bar of some sort, but I think the name's changed. Anyhow, that's one of them. Um, White Chicks. I had a fish fry from there earlier, actually, or earlier this year. Oh, did you? It was 
It was really good. Yeah. So we cool. went on a Friday during Lent, and they, that was actually all they had. So I was like, all right, I'll try it. It was delicious. So. Oh, awesome. Yeah, that was, a, like I said, that was right where your dad hung out with a lot of his friends. I'd leave in the morning and be there all day because I had uh, two or three friends uh, living on that street. Uh, White Checks Lounge is another one that a lot of people are saying you got to go check out for a fish fry. Have you ever heard of White Checks, Nicole? I haven't. Okay. And then another person who I talked to over the last couple of days said Sneakers in Blaisdell, another good place to go. So again, these are recommendations from people in Buffalo. Take their word for it. They know what the, they know the best places to go. Are there any other places I may have missed, Nicole, that you think should be on the list there? You know what? Honestly, there are you can probably find a decent fish fry at almost any local bar during Lent. Like any bar that serves food will have a decent fish fry. Um, like I said, it's not usually what I go for. So recommendations, not really, don't really know, but you can, every place, even if they don't have fish on the menu normally, will have some sort of fish fry during Lent. So yeah. that's what you're looking for. You're not going to have a hard time finding it, but you might have a hard time getting a seat. You know, out here, even though we live, uh, you know, I live very close to the ocean, fish fries just aren't at the top of the list, uh, the menus at many places. And I can tell you, I can remember when I was back in Buffalo, I love these, uh, these fish fries. So, um, yeah, so let's move on to the next one, moving up the list. And now, I mean, I'm, I'm already hungry. I don't know about you, Nicole. I hope, uh, I mean, it's getting closer to lunch for you. It's still early morning here, but I'm already wanting to get out and get some of this, these yummy foods uh, i have brunch at noon i'm i'm already ready i'm already ready <laughs> <laughs> all right let's move on so spaghetti parm now you'd be most of you'd be like what spaghetti parm i've heard of chicken parm what the heck is spaghetti parm so spaghetti parm is this amazing dish it's served out of um, it's in uh, it was created by and served by chef's restaurant in buffalo I don't know if there's other restaurants that serve it in Buffalo because I don't know if they could compare to this dish. I know Nicole, um, you go to you've been to Chefs. I believe you've had yeah. this exact dish. And uh, that's done. what's that? I said that's my go-to. When we, when I get a spaghetti part. Is there are there any other places you would even think of going for this? I wouldn't think so, right? Um, I mean, there are. There's a Italian restaurant called Pasquale's that has, it's not, you can get things parmed. Like, it's not like specifically a spaghetti parm on the menu, but you can order like an pasta and get it parmed where they just put the, the cheese on top and melt it. But I usually, chefs is the place I go to if I really want one. Right, right. So the way they make this, um, everybody, is it's, it's regular spaghetti pasta. They put the spaghetti pasta in a bowl. They uh, put in the, the sauce. And then they put a little bit of butter in there and they mix it. And then they put that into a dish. And at Chef's, they layer the top with mozzarella slices. Then they pop it in. I mean, layer it. They, it if you ever watch them make this, I mean, there's a lot of slices of mozzarella that go on top of this. And you can see from the amount of cheese there. They pop it in the broiler for about two minutes. And boom, out comes spaghetti parm. Now, funny, funny story about this. i never been to Chef's, but I've had spaghetti parm. <laughs> but it was my own spaghetti parm, and I was. And I'm gonna tell you a story of how um, I was, you know, brought to know about this. So, when I was younger, back in Buffalo, I had my cousin and his wife. They worked for chefs. And I remember them inviting me over to dinner, and I went there, and they were making spaghetti. And they said, "Look, we're gonna we're gonna make something similar to what what uh, a dish that chefs has." And I'm like, "Okay." Well, they fired up the broiler. They then took shredded mozzarella and they put it over the top of the spaghetti, popped it in the broiler for two minutes, and let me tell you, that was delicious. Uh, and, and from and from that point on, I was I was hooked. Again, I didn't know the technical name was spaghetti parm. Now I do, but for any of those that uh, want to have a little taste yourself, it'll never match up to chefs. I guarantee you. But hey, take a little pasta, put some uh, put your sauce on it, put some mozzarella. Uh, shredded mozzarella on top and as much as you want you want a little you want a lot pop it into the broiler pop it out and uh two minutes later you've got yourself spaghetti parm i think you guys make that as well nicole is that correct yeah to be entirely honest i didn't know it was a buffalo <laughs> thing i thought it was just how you ate spaghetti so yeah we um we throw 
some on there, especially if you're heating up pasta the next day, throw like a handful of mozzarella, a handful of Parmesan, throw it in the oven, or if you're just really lazy, you can put it in the microwave too. That works. <laughs> Yeah, super good. So uh, I recommend you guys, if you're in Buffalo, this is a place to go, especially if you love Italian food. Chef's has uh, been there forever and uh, and super good. And yeah, so let's move on to the next one. So again, there's nowhere else I'd recommend to go for this other than Chef's. It's a place to go. Like, uh, like my daughter mentioned, she mentioned a couple other places, but uh, you're not going to get the uh, the full experience. All right, moving up the list here. Oh, man, do I miss this sandwich. Beef on Wick. Whew, can't find it out here. I remember coming out here, and I believe Nicole is uh, Arby's still a thing back in Buffalo. Still at Arby's back there? Not really. No? Okay. Our closest Arby's closed. I mean, That's there a... might be, there used to be one at the Galleria, but like, it's not. It's not there. That's no unfortunate. Really cool that, <laughs> that's unfortunate. They have it out here. It, it, when I have been here a few times, it's just nothing like it used to be. And I, and what's funny about this is, uh, I remember when I first came out to California, I went somewhere and I'm like, I'd like to order a beef on weck. And I believe it was an Arby's because I think Arby's in Buffalo used to serve beef on weck. And they looked at me like I was absolutely crazy. Beef on weck? What the heck is that? So let's talk about it. There you go. You can see the pictures. It's a thinly thinly sliced roast beef um, cooked to your to your liking medium rare is what I think most people go with I, I like just the medium uh, my, my son would like a medium well Nicole are, are you a fan of beef on work? I do like beef on work. I do how do you like the meat cooked um, I'm, I just usually go for like a standard medium like okay. I don't I know mom likes them more when they're a little bit more well done but I'm fine with just a regular medium Gotcha. Yeah, this sandwich is, uh, uh, again, pretty much unique to Buffalo. I can't find it out here, and I've asked for it. Um, what makes it, not only is the, the roast beef cooked to perfection, kind of melts in your mouth, not really hard to, you know, taking a bite out of this is that meat just comes off like nothing. But the the roll, it's it's on a, I think I'm going to say this right, it's a Kimmelweck roll. And that's how you guys pronounce it, right? And what it has on it, it has kosher salt on top of it with some caraway seeds. And that mixture, that salt with the roast beef, and a lot of people say put a little horse radish on it um, for that extra bite. I'm not a horse radish fan, so you don't need it. And this sandwich is delicious. What about you, Nicole? Do you put horse radish on this when you're eating it? I I don't actually. I just kind of eat it with the roll, and I'm happy here. Yeah. It's delicious. Some people dip it in like um, uh, the juices um, from from the roast, but I never did that. I'm pretty much the sandwich is just tasty enough. Um, so, some of the places that were recommended were a place called Kelly's Corner, um, Bill Bar Tavern, Charlie the Bar Bill, Bar Bill. yeah, mm -hmm. and then uh, Charlie the Butcher, Schwabbles, and FYI, I've put the links in the description. For a lot of these places I'm talking about, so you can kind of go to their homepage if you're ever in Buffalo, see where they are, or if you're just curious and want to learn a little bit more, click on the links and then you can go go check them out. Any other places? Actually, I did want to bring one other place up, which because right where you live, Nicole, not far from where you live, is a place called uh, Steve's Pig and Ox, right? That's it. And that's a place where I know my dad when he's visited you, he's taken you guys there for lunch, and it's it's just a place that was. Uh, we went there quite often. That was our go-to place. And their roast beef is delicious as well. So special mention to them. And they are, um, I forget what street they're on, Nicole. Do you know off the top of your head? I think it's rich. Yeah. Now I'm like questioning myself because it's been a bit since I've gone there. But I'm 95% positive. It's... Yeah, if anyone's watching the... Yeah, Bridge right, Road. Excellent. Thank you for that. Yeah, so if anyone else, again, as we're going through these foods, for those folks in Buffalo that might be watching this, if you have other go-to places, which I'm sure you do, let us know in the comments. And uh, that way, anyone coming to Buffalo know the best spots. Because they might not get, informa get good information if they're just searching on Google, best places to go. Because those are usually, um, somebody's usually sponsoring those, those surveys. So check that out. Uh, we're going to move up the list here. We're getting close to our number one. And these two, 
by the way, these next two I'm going to talk about, they're both number one for me. But I'll tell you why I, I put this one at number two here in a second. Here we go. Buffalo style pizza. Oh my God. I, I, I've been searching forever, Nicole. There's just no place out here in California where I can get this type of pizza. I've, I go to pizza joint after pizza joint. There's nothing like the pizza from Buffalo. Now I'm going to, there's a myth from people out here in California that people in California have. When I say I miss my pizza back in Buffalo and I say this all the time, they're like, Oh, you like that thin crust stuff. Like, no, that's New York style pizza. That's not real pizza. Yeah, that's, no, that's, that's not. a cracker with some toppings on it. I don't, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not talking about that whatsoever. This is a, um, so it's, as you can see, it's kind of a medium thickness, um, on the, on the, the crust that they use. And you'll see the crust is, there's not a, a lot of it. It's very thin crust. Um, but again, not thin, uh, layered. It's a medium thickness. But the toppings go pretty much out to the edges on a lot of these places. And there's a term that I learned while I was researching this is the cup and char, the, the cup and char and the pepperoni. As you can see, when the pepperoni's uh, being cooked, it kind of forms a little cup and then they char it on the edges. Super delicious. A lot of these pizzas, I mean, uh, a couple of them that I'm going to mention were to go. Um, I've had them and... The interesting thing about pizza in Buffalo, once you find your go-to place, that's it. I mean, I think you do might have maybe one other one, Nicole, you can tell me. But for the most part, folks in Buffalo, they find their favorite place and that's where they go for the most part. Yeah. And honestly, like it, depend, it might depend on what, you, what you're looking for that day, depending on where you go. Like you might like regular pizza from one place, but you might like, they might have like a stinger pizza or like a buffalo chicken pizza at another restaurant that's your favorite. But so you just kind of, and there's so many, there's so many like small pizzerias that you can find a different one on every corner. So there's no way you can't find something you love. Yeah. yeah so you might ask, you might be asking me like, come on, Mike, you haven't been able to find a pizza as good as what's back in Buffalo. And I'm, I'm being honest. You can ask anyone in my family out here. I'm constantly, as people tell me, oh, this, you got to try this pizza place. I'm always trying it. I'm always searching. I just can't find it. And, and I don't know if I was to explain to you what it is. Maybe it's the sauce. They use like a, a, a little bit of a sweet sauce. The the dough, the way they make the crust, the, the way they make the, uh, the undercarriage of the pizza. I don't know. It's a mixture. The cheese, every, it's just, the cheese is put on perfectly so that every bite you get a little bit of that cheese and um other than that uh, this is the best way i can explain it to you and um it's probably the dough it's probably the way the the thickness of the pizza and it's it's nowhere near thick as like a, a, a chicago pie but it's yeah. it's just the to me it's the perfect thickness right and some of the places that i've been to and Others have recommended in Buffalo to go get pizza, uh, Carbone's Pizza, Minio's, Bocce Club, Imperial Pizza, and Lenovo Pizza. Um, did I miss any, Nicole, that uh, that are your favorites? Um, actually, no, you hit all of them. I, I love Carbone's. Um, it's a little, it's, it's not far. When I say it's a little far out, I'm not kidding when there's a pizza place on every corner. So when I say Carbone's is a little far out, it means that Minio's is like, on the corner of my street so <laughs> i love minio's pizza it's very like quick and convenient if i'm looking for if i'm in the mood for carbones because i love carbones i'll order from there and usually have to like drive out and grab it um imperial's great imperial also has a really nice bar and like seating area so they you can go in and just have a whole dining experience or you can take it out um so it really just kind of depends what you're in the mood for and what you're feeling and how many blocks you're willing to drive for a slice of pizza that day. Right, right. And like I said, when I when I was there, it was pretty much, I found one place and that was my go-to. Now, if I went to my friend's house or whatever and they were ordering pizza, they might have had a different um, pizza joint that they'd like to go to. But you really, you, you touched on it, Nicole. And I joked, this, joked on this in my first stream uh, a couple of weeks ago. I talked about there being a bar on every corner. But there's, True. right, there's yeah. a... Bar, it's either a bar, a church, or a pizzeria. Right, it's right. Every corner. One of the stats that I found uh, researching pizza in Buffalo is that there's 600 pizzerias 
in Buffalo. So roughly one pizza joint for every 428 people. That is more pizzerias per capita in Buffalo than in New York City. That's crazy, All right? So you, I'm telling you, these places that I mentioned, these are the top go-to places, but it's hard to find a bad pizza in Buffalo, right? Because if you have bad pizza, you're not going to survive. Oh, definitely. Well, and even then, like, I live in South Buffalo now, but I live, I've lived in downtown Buffalo for the last five years. I just recently moved back to South Buffalo. There's a whole different section of Buffalo pizzerias downtown. Like, there's Mr. Pizza. There's That's usually what I ordered from. We've got, like, Allentown Pizza. There's Once you hit downtown, that's a whole different section of pizzerias. It's more, again, it's how far are you willing to go for a slice of pizza that day. <laughs> Yeah, the last time I was in Buffalo, I mean, close to where you and your mama are right now, was Imperial Pizza. I think that was actually in yeah. walking distance, but it was yeah. delicious. Now, I loved it, and I know you, I think I was talking to um, my son, Brandon, your brother, and I even yeah. think you, I think either ownership changed or something changed, um, and Brandon wasn't quite the fan of it anymore, and what about you, as far as Imperial? Um. I've never really been a big fan of their sauce. Um, I think it's a little too sweet, but it, it's also, I know it's very popular. So I usually, I mean, it's not, not that I won't eat yeah. it. It's just not what I reach for, especially when there's so many other places you can go that will have sauce that I like. Um, but like I said, though, they recently opened a bar selection and a seating area and it, you can go in there and have some drinks, have some food with your friends. And it's a really nice time in there. And they've got, a whole menu of things yeah. as well. I know. I, I love the pizza. It, it was like, I, I'm when I left, I, I've been craving it ever since. And any of these pizzas. I've had bocce pizza. Bocce's been around forever. Um, I had Imperial. I've had Carbones. All amazing pizza. And like I said, 600 pizzerias. you got to make a good pizza in Buffalo, else no one's going to go to you. So you know, you pretty much can't go wrong <laughs> wherever you go for pizza but I'm just giving you some recommendations from the local folks of where they believe the best pizza is served out of. So, and you heard it from Nicole as well. So miss it. If you want to hit me up afterwards and you know, if you have some suggestions from folks that are here in California, if you think you can match or you know a pizzeria that matches this here, please let me know. Cause I'm constantly searching for it. I haven't, I haven't been able to find it yet. Look at that pizza. Just look at it. Nicole, you see what I'm, you, you, I mean, it's amazing. <laughs> I got a. It's only seven thirty-eight here, and I'm craving pizza. <laughs> yeah, but unfortunately for you, you're not going to have a good pizza. I know exactly right. So I'm going to have to take my own warning early on and uh, book my next flight out there. We're well, hoping to. We had thought about taking the kids out there, Nicole, uh, last year, kind of showing them where mm -hmm. I grew up, show where you guys are. They miss you guys a lot, and um, but the pandemic shut that down. So hopefully this year we can get out there and you can give uh, Jonah and Caleb a tour of Buffalo and take them to the best places. They love to eat. They love pizza. They're going to be amazed. Trust me. If they love to eat, Buffalo is the place to go. We can, we can work that out. <laughs> <laughs> and you, I mean, you lived a, a little bit out here in California and you visited. Yeah. I mean, you agree with me? Nothing, no pizza out there that out here compares, right? No, I mean, it, it's not, it's not the same. It's not <laughs> the same. And like, you wouldn't, I mean, at this point, it's just so standard for like, cause I've, I have lived in California, but for the most part I lived here. And so leaving and going anywhere else and getting pizza is just weird. Right. It's like a weird thing to order. When I went, I went to a school in Oswego for a little bit and even only two hours away, it just wasn't the same. Totally agree. Totally agree. It's like you'll be disappointed, right? If you leave Buffalo, uh, go go anywhere else, and for you guys, you order a pizza, you're like, "What is this?" Yeah. But anyhow, again, like, I want to reiterate: this is Buffalo pizza. So the next time my friends hear me say I miss Buffalo pizza, do not think I'm talking about New York style thin crust. No, I don't consider that real pizza. I don't mean to offend anybody. <laughs> 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 I don't mean to offend anyone, but uh, I'm sorry. I don't like crackers with uh, with toppings on it. I want some real pizza. All right. Number one on my list, again, pizza to me, and this one is, uh, they're both number one. But the reason I put the, there it is, the original wing 
as number one because as you should all know when you're eating those buffalo wings wherever you are in the country they originated in buffalo and i have a picture on the right there showing the anchor bar downtown buffalo that's supposedly the place that that started it all and i have a couple other places uh, on here but you'll see these wings um again these pizza shops and nicole correct me if i'm wrong but all the pizza shops also sell wings right the the go the go oh, yes. the go-to dinner is wings and pizza i mean i think a lot of families yep. did that when i was young um my mom would say let's get a bucket of wings and a pizza and that's what we'd have for dinner and that yeah you do it for parties too you don't get a cater you just get a sheet pizza and, and a bucket of wings and that's your bucket of wings that's your meal everyone's happy now have they changed a bucket still 50 right 50 wings right. all right yeah, yeah and a sheet pizza is just I, I mean, it's massive. It's gonna, it, it's meant for parties, but uh, super delicious. But anyhow, the chicken wing. So, what's funny story about the Anchor Bar? Yeah, if you come to Buffalo, you're a tourist. I highly suggest you go there, just for the experience, just so you can say, yeah, I was at the place where the where the Buffalo chicken wing originated. But I got to tell you, and talking to the call, she has the, you know, same experience. I didn't really know about the Anchor Bar growing up. I didn't know anything about it till I don't know, uh, early in my adult life when I was out here in California and I heard about it. I'm like, what? Okay. And I think, that, and Nicole, same thing for you, right? It's Anchor Bar. Is that even a place I, you've been to? I knew about No, <laughs> yeah. I've never yeah. been there. And I, um, I worked at front desk at, at the hotel and we used to tell people like, if you want to go for wings, you could go to the Anchor Bar, but that's not. Where we go right. for wings, if that's what you're looking for. Yeah, and everyone, every one of the recommendations uh, from folks that are in Buffalo, no one mentions Anchor Bar. And uh, again, if if you're going to Buffalo, you got to stop there just for the experience. But then after you've had wings there, go to one of these other places that I'm going to mention so you can get the best wings in Buffalo. And again, funny that I've never been there. Nicole's never been there. And again, because there's so many you know, 600 pizzerias that also are wing shops, you pretty much find the closest one to where you live and that's the one you go to. So I never, yeah, it's Anchor Bar. Pretty interesting. Um, but yeah. cool. They, uh, apparently they're now a chain. I think they have a, a few more locations. They have, I know they definitely have a location in the Buffalo Airport. Yeah. So if you're looking to try to get it out of the way, stop there on your way through the airport and be done with it. <laughs> So a couple of places, uh, actually, you know what's interesting, um, Nicola, as I was researching this, and I got to find out if it's true, they claim there's an anchor bar out here in Orange, California. So Orange, California is about an hour and really? a half. So I might may have to make the trip. Again, it's not the same as going to the original one in Buffalo, but, you know, let me see what their wings are like. It might be better than a Buffalo Wild Wings. Oh yeah, for sure. Possibly. <laughs> and and let's talk about um, so before I get into some of the places now what you're seeing on here the top left picture is Doc Sullivan's Smitty Wings these things are highly recommended again it's the links in my uh, comment section or in the description Doc Sullivan's if you're out to Buffalo and after you've go to, gone to the uh, Anchor Bar go to one of these next few places I'm going to mention but Doc Sullivan's comes highly recommended for their Smitty Wings, and I, I think you've had those before. Is that true, Nicole? Yeah. Yeah, they actually, um, when they, they, Doc Sullivan's changed owners in the past couple years, and they made sure that they brought their Smitty Wings with them because they're, they're so popular that they really couldn't keep Doc Sullivan's open and not have those wings. Right. I would imagine these places I'm going to talk about are probably super busy might be hard to get in and sometimes um are there or, or is that not the case Ask Sullivan's is a bar okay and then they've got food but that's not that's not usually what people are going there for unless they're going for wings because i don't know it's benefits that have gone there i don't really know but we used to go like once we could have wing night and you'd get like 10 cent wings and you go and just order a bunch of wings with all your friends and have some drinks and have fun I don't necessarily know what they have now, but that used to be what we ever really had getting in here. Yeah. yeah, so a couple other places you'll see a picture down in the, the lower left is uh, Duff's Wings. Um, another place is, again, Barbell. I mentioned that 
bar was it Barbell, right? Yeah, Barbell Tavern. Barbell. I mentioned that earlier as well. So again, a lot of these places, they not only serve up wings, they not only serve up pizza, they not only serve up beef on whack. Uh, you can get one-stop shops, but Barbell was another one that highly recommended from folks in Buffalo. Well, Daniel's, Gin Mill and Grill, and Big Tree Inn, and then Duff's, of course, that I just mentioned. Um, and is there anything I missed, uh, uh, Nicole, that you could recommend, or did I pretty much hit the spots that you use? No, uh, to, to be entirely honest with you, for the most part, if we're getting wings, we're getting them from our local pizzerias. Yeah. We're going to get them from Imperial or Carbones or from Vineos and stuff like that. Where, in whereas like Barbell, and they're good for their wings, and you know, Jocks is fine too. It's if you're getting wings, you're getting them from one of your local pizzerias. Usually, like you have a place, or you might actually have two different places. You might like pizza from one place and wings from another, the best, and then you might have one that's in the middle that has like your second favorite pizza that also has your second favorite <laughs> wing and like that's where you go when you want both yeah like i said growing but, up we had our one-stop shop we found the place that served both and that's where we typically go so and again 600 pizzerias folks i mean and they're all good okay. i do have something to say though buffalo people do not eat their wings with ranch dressing that is sacrilegious. <laughs> if you ever mention the fact that you're going to eat your wings with ranch dressing, buffalo people will slay you alive. <laughs> we, eat our, we eat our wings with blue cheese. And that's that's it. Keep your ranch dressing somewhere. I, I, so I couldn't agree with you more. I want you to have a conversation with Caleb. Because Caleb's into this ranch dipping everything. And yes, wings as well. So let's talk to him and try to convince him otherwise, okay? Have, have the intervention that's just well one of the other things i wanted to mention about the wings so growing up for me we had mild medium and hot those were our options and i think if i went back to buffalo that's what i would order mild medium or hot with that buffalo sauce smitty's has its own sauce these and i and i know buffalo's adapted as well but these places out here buffalo wild wings 21 22 different flavors of sauce that you can put on your wing and I'm sorry, stick with the basics, you won't be disappointed. But I know, Nicole, you uh, you were telling me that a lot of the places they have adapted and they have other sauces that they offer. Yep. But some of them, some of the places still stick to just the basics, right? They just have the mild, medium, and hot. Right, some of them stick to the basics. Some of them have like a few more, and then depending on where you're going, some of them go like even further. Um, I know Imperial Pizza, one of my favorite things to get there is they have their wings are barbecue garlic parm. Those are my favorite. They're delicious. It sounds like a weird combination, but it's super good. Um, my mom really likes their Loganberry barbecue sauce that they have with have an Imperial. Those are really good. A lot of places will have like garlic like parm. They'll have, you know, Cajun or honey mustard. It kind of all depends. And like certain places have bigger varieties of sauces. So like I said, you can kind of, depending on what you're in the mood for, it might be a different place or it might all be at the same place. But you've got plenty of options. Yeah, that Loganberry that you you just mentioned uh, being a sauce for the wings. I mean, that sounds amazing to me. Um, but mm -hmm. again, I'm I would try that if I want if I go back this uh, this year. I'll probably try that. But to me, I'm gonna stick with my basics. And again, out here, I'm not sure what it is. I have not found a wing. You're gonna say, yeah, right, Mike. You know, we got a lot of wings wing places out here. When I first came out here. It, it was hard to find wings. It was like, uh, do you guys have buffalo wings? They're like, what? what is that? Now it's grown, and of course, almost everybody has buffalo wings out here. And wild wings, um, buffalo wild wings, epic wings. There's a few places out here, but to me, they're not the same. Now, thankfully, my wife has her recipe. She did a lot of research on how they're made in buffalo, and she cooked something close. So it gets me past my craving for the chicken wing. And I told her today, please... Can we have wings? Because I'm gonna be. I've been talking about this stuff all week. I've been researching it, and I'm craving that pizza, which I know I can't get. But the wings, I can get close if she makes them for me. So hopefully, that's something uh, she can do. <laughs> so anyhow, um, that's kind of all the all the uh, food topics that we had. Again, everything's in the um, in the description. I have links to all of these things that we talked about. If you have any questions for me. I'm going to take us back to uh, where you can see both uh, Nicole and I. And again, Nicole, thank you so much for, for joining us, uh, joining me. Yeah. yeah it, was, it was fun. I hope we can do this again because you're my insider there in Buffalo. 
and, <laughs> yeah. and I can get you on and verify some things that I'm saying and, you know, put, set me straight where I, where I could be wrong. Things have changed since I've last been there. And uh, I love getting updates uh, about the, the different places. But it's funny how some a lot of things have changed, but a lot of things have remained the same. And those pizzerias that we've all grown up with, they're there and they've stayed around forever. You know, I mean, you, you, yeah. that says something. It really does say something. So, again, just to recap, we talked about Loganberry. Again, try it out. I think you'll love it. It's a great thing to have with your meal. We talked about peanut sticks. Yeah. Uh, donuts with peanuts on it, right? That's how I referred to it as a kid. It was don't mom, pick up some of those donuts with those peanuts on it, but they're peanut sticks. Try them out. Sponge candy. You won't be disappointed. Bison dip. Again, I think you can order it on Amazon. It's going to be pricey, but if, uh, if you're craving it, if you're like me, who's moved away from Buffalo and you want it, that's a good way to get it. But Hey, maybe, uh, Hit up Nicole in the in the chat and put her put your address and maybe you can uh, work out a deal for her to send you some of these things. I even see some of these uh, wing places and I think even pizza. I think it's pizza delivering across the country. You can go to their website and they'll deliver. I thought I saw it on Bocce, but I just don't know how the pizza. I mean, to me, the Buffalo pizza is meant to be eaten hot, fresh out of the oven. They um delivered Cincinnati. I, you know what, honestly, now that I'm thinking about it, I can't remember what football team it was. I feel like it might have been Cincinnati, though. They um, delivered pizza and wings to the Cincinnati football team when they helped the Bills oh, get into the yeah. uh, playoffs for, like, the first time in a really, really long time. Right. And so we sent them pizza and wings. We weren't even playing them. He just, they won, and that meant that we could go to the playoffs. So we sent them pizza and wings. Yeah, I remember that. That was a uh, Andy Dalton threw a pass late in the game to win win yes. it. Right, and uh, Buffalo. I mean, this is just another reason why these are some of the best people ever. They donated to his charity. I mean, he was overwhelmed with yeah. the amount of money that Buffalo put into his charity. And again, you said they sent him some of the best pizza um, in the world, in my opinion. So that is super cool. Um, so good stuff. We talked about sponge candy. We talked about bison dip. Uh, we talked about the Salins hot dogs. Uh, Ted's is uh, one of the go-to places to get them. Again, you can buy them at your local grocery store in Buffalo and uh, cook them yourselves. They're just as good. But uh, if you're if you're out and about, and you're out your friends, you want to go somewhere, and you don't want to uh, fire up the barbecue. Ted's is the place to go. We talked about fish fries. We talked about spaghetti parm. Again, you got to try this. You can make your own version of it. Nicole and I both said we do. It's delicious. But if you get the buffalo, definitely check it out um, at Chef's Restaurant. And then we talked about beef on WEC. Again, if there, if anyone, I mean, maybe I'm going to talk to some investors and we're going to get this sandwich out here because the sandwich would be the bomb and kill it on any menu. I'm not sure why it's not out here yet. So I'm going to see what I can do about that. Pizza. I already spoke so much about the pizza. Love it. Miss it. And then we talked about chicken wings. That's pretty much, much it. Nicole, is there anything else I missed? Any food, anything on my list that I might have missed that you think is kind of a, a thing in Buffalo? No, the only thing I can think of is me trying to find a way to bring you Cherry Crush in my suitcase oh. <laughs> and realize that there's no way that that's going to happen. That's another weird thing. Otherwise, no, I think we hit it yeah, all. Cherry Crush, believe it or not. You guys have Orange Crush, but you don't we have, have cherry, orange. Right? We have Strawberry, and they don't bring out Cherry Crush. What? What the heck? Now, I did... We searched a couple of years ago for Cherry Crush because I was craving it. And thankfully, there was actually some Walmarts that had it. We had to go pretty far to get it. Oh, but it's really? not regularly stocked, like you said. And yeah, I'm always, uh, my daughter in the past has, has uh, hooked me up with some Cherry Crush. And if you haven't had Cherry Crush, <laughs> you're missing out. <laughs> anyway, thank you very much, Nicole. I know you're busy. Love you. Thank you so much. We'll talk again soon, okay? No problem. Take care.